How to get ahead of 99% of computer science majors in one year. Now, just to be clear, this isn't gonna be a speech of how to land your first internship, how to get your first job, how to break into tech. This is gonna be how to take your existing skills and really level up to get to ideally like an elite status, a top 1%. So today we're not gonna learn how to dribble a basketball. We're gonna take our basketball skills and shoot for the NBA. Sound good with you guys? Good? Yeah. All right, sweet, sweet. And specifically in this speech, I'm gonna be breaking this down into three different categories. The first part is learning how to talk tech. So back when I was in college, back when I was majoring in computer science myself, one time this freshman came up to me and she was asking for some help on her computer science assignment. The assignment was, can you write out a function to tell if a number is divisible by 10? If x modulus 10 equals zero, return true, else return false, right? It's pretty basic. But as I was saying these things, like the modulus operator or conditionals or ternary or uh, even the words like function, method, the sheer like look on her face as I was saying all these like tech jargon words, it was crazy. When I was saying words like conditionals, ternaries, modulus. But the reason that I'm bringing this up is although that that's a funny story, that actually happens to most of us on a day-to-day -day basis on a different level. So although words like ternary, module, functions, classes don't impress us that much, words like machine learning, AI, generative AI, that all sounds super, super impressive. Especially nowadays, people almost use AI as a marketing term. Like I spent some time in San Francisco last summer and I swear to God, everyone and their mom had some startup that used AI, whether it was in the medical field, in the law field, and it didn't even have to do with tech. I think there was even this one boba company that had some AI in it and I was like, what the heck? So everyone is talking AI nowadays. Everyone has something AI written and it's used as a marketing term. It's used as a way to qualify someone even. I was scrolling on TikTok the other day and it was a video of someone said, I took one computer science class and now on my resume is, and then there's a guy saying, big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence. You, you know that, you know that TikTok? And all these buzzwords uh, just put on. And although that it's, it's super funny to see that nowadays everyone is getting involved in this, this actually leads us into two potential problems. So the first one is you get everything just on the surface level. There's no deep dive understanding into it. In fact, I know people who actually work in this whole like AI ML space that don't even know the differences between machine learning, AI, or generative AI. There are people who are so deep in this field or are working on a startup that has machine learning components in it, but they don't know the difference between like supervised learning, unsupervised learning, or reinforcement learning. So not having a deep understanding and just using these things as like talking points, as surface level things, as just things to add onto your resume, that is a way to get stuck in the majority of the crowd. Like the people who are truly successful, and there are gonna be a lot of startups, a lot of businesses, a lot of projects that take on and explode in the next coming decade, they're gonna be using these things. And so having a true big understanding of those things is essential. So that's why we need to learn how to talk tech. And another like, example that I like to present in order to understand this a little better is, let's just say you're in a baking competition. You're trying to create something, like let's just say cookies, right? You have your chocolate chips, you have your sugar, you have eggs, you have flour. And then comes in a guy who has these exotic ingredients like cocoa beans from South America, pure vanilla from like a different country and all these gourmet ingredients. You stand no chance in that competition purely by the fact that you don't even understand what he's working with. You don't even understand what he's cooking with. Like he has things that are so far beyond your understanding that you will never be able to catch up. So by understanding all this tech jargon and understanding the differences between like machine learning AI and generative AI, just simply understanding those things is the first step in leveling the playing field with the top 1%. Because you will never be able to join the top 1% unless you're able to level the playing field with them. 
So th that's what I want to do, it really establish our mindset to level the playing field and understanding what everyone's dealing with nowadays, especially with new technologies. For example, a couple of months ago, DeepSeek came out. Did we really understand what, how it operates? Did we really understand how the reinforcement learning on that model works? Why it's different than models like ChatGPT, for example? Did we really understand it? Those are all the fundamentals. Just taking a deep dive into all these technologies and really understanding all these technical jargons is step one. The second part is gaining meaningful, impactful experience. Experience nowadays, we all think of, it's just uh, getting an internship, getting a job, pretty much what experience is usually defined as. But things are changing quite a bit. Coding projects can be experiences, research labs, experiences, even volunteering could be experience. Like you all are here, students at UIUC. I bet there are a bunch of non-technical clubs that could use some of your expertise. Maybe there's a debate club, maybe there's a business club that needs a website, that needs a dashboard. Maybe there's a local mom and pop shop that needs some help dri driving insights from their data or needs some advice on running a certain campaign to increase their revenue during this time or maybe during the weekdays, they don't have enough revenue. So maybe they need some help identifying that campaign. Maybe there's something that you guys can help out with just with s some simple Python, maybe some simple JavaScript. There's some things that you guys can do. And specifically what I really want to emphasize is having meaningful experience. I see far too many people nowadays doing projects that are just so surface level that are almost projects just for the sake of doing projects. Like, it doesn't matter if you're working in machine learning or AI or all these cool technologies, if it's not an impactful, meaningful project. Like, you can create a super cool image classifier that can tell the difference between cherry muffins, blueberry muffins, and chocolate chip muffins. But is that really impactful? Is that really that useful? I mean, maybe to you if you're that, that into muffins, but for the majority of the world, probably not. Versus someone who creates just a simple website using the basics HTML, CSS, JavaScript, but that website is used in a nonprofit that helps people get medical devices in a third world country. All of a sudden, the impact of that experience far exceeds whatever that cherry image classifier thing that that person did just to throw on their resume real quick, which I don't think it even helps your resume that much. So finding solutions to problems rather than doing projects for the sake of doing projects is essential. This is the whole meaningful experience part that I'm talking about. On this point, I just wanted to give a few examples of almost how easy it is to gain meaningful experience nowadays. So a couple of my friends, uh, they notice at their local mosque, donations aren't that seamless. It's pretty hard to get donations because not a lot of people have cash nowadays. They usually do card or Apple Pay. And the credit card processing system at their mosque was just very tedious. It was not that operational. It would cause a lot of lines and just become a huge issue. So one of my friends, he wasn't even a computer science major. He actually majored in industrial engineering. So like little to no technical experience, especially compared to all of us here. He decided to create this app called Nizam, and it basically serves as a mosque donation system in which there's like a screen. You, it's a very simple UI where you select something, you're able to tap your card, tap your phone, and then go right away. So there's no hold up, and the mosque actually can increase their donation so much, and also use the user profile data for whatever they need. And just like that, he created a solution to a problem. And I, I'm not going to get into metrics, but it's doing really, really well. And it's a very simple app that solves a problem. Another guy, he created this app called Riz GPT. Have you guys heard of it? You wish? <laughs> For those who don't know, it's basically a chat GPT wrapper. It uses chat GPT to analyze screenshots of your text with a significant other and helps you create responses to it. I, I don't promote the product, but I'm just talking about it as a case study. He was a guy without a technical background, but he used AI to learn how to use AI and created this application, paid two influencers a couple of hundred bucks, just a few hundred bucks, and then immediately put this product out and started generating five-figure months, month over month. 
So these are just examples of people with non-technical backgrounds solving meaningful, impactful problems and creating solutions to it. These are the type of projects that you guys can work in. And in fact, the case studies that I presented, if you have these projects under your belt, you might not even need to work a software engineering job. You might not even need to work your software engineering internship depending on how these projects work, especially if you're solving a meaningful, impactful project in which there is a market for it, you'll be successful without any corporate job through this. And so you can truly enter the 1%. So those are the first two parts. So what's the first thing that I talked about? Big data. <laughs> Big data. Learning how to talk in tech, technical jargon. The second part, meaningful projects. So once you've established yourself in those two fields, the third step is to be very, very loud. In 2025, we are in the attention economy where all the big tech companies, all the successful people all around the world are competing for your attention. They're competing for your eyeballs, your mind space. They want you focused so much on their product and on their service, on their whatever. You're in the attention economy. In that, once you've established your base, once you've created something, once you've worked on something meaningful, you need to get as many eyeballs on it as much as possible. In fact, I actually talked to this one engineer a couple of months ago, and he told me that he has not once had to apply or interview around for a job because anytime he does a cool coding project, he throws it up onto his Twitter, he throws it up on his LinkedIn, and through that, startup founders have found him through that. Because why does anyone need to evaluate you for your technical aptitude? Why do you need to apply to jobs if I can see that you're doing really cool things, you're developing super cool projects? I'd want to work with you then, right? So develop these projects and throw them out in the world. And I can even tell from my own personal experience, like part of the reason I'm sure a lot of you know me and part of the reason I've been invited out here is because of my online presence, because of my online media. I decided to put stuff out into the world, which has given me the opportunity to impact a lot of people, but it's also helped my own career. Even today, right now, I have many recruiters that are in my DMs. I have a meta recruiter who DM'd me on Instagram a couple months ago asking me if I wanted to join their team. I have startup founders who are inviting me out to join their uh, startup as a co-founder. I have many people who want to work with me, who are trying to net network with me even. And a lot of people ask, when I'm trying to network, what's the best way? What's the best approach? How do I reach out to this person? How do I reach out to the person? Truly, the best way to network is grow your own value as much as you can, such as growing an online presence, and then they'll reach out to you. And it starts very, very simple. When you're at any event, like for example, an event like this, maybe you take a picture, maybe you post about it on LinkedIn. Very, very simple. It doesn't have to be every day. It just has to be whenever you're out and about. And then slowly you'll gain traction through that and be able to help your own career. Having an online presence has allowed me to even network beyond what I would be able to through my normal job. For example, last year I got to interview C-level executives at GitHub, the CPO and COO. I've gone to interview the CTO of a multi-billion dollar company. I've gone to literally travel around America just by having this online presence in the tech space because people view me as an established voiced authority. And so that's truly how you transcend your career beyond the basics of like a internship or a job. And one big question that I get a lot is, do I need to have this qualification? Do I need to be this good? Uh, what, what if I'm, I'm not? I'm just a student out here. Well, what do I know? I'd like to reference this quote. You don't need to be great to start, but you have to start in order to be great. Your first post is going to be your worst take. Your first project is going to be your worst project. Your first internship is going to be your worst internship. Your first whatever you do is oftentimes going to be your worst. You have to pay down ignorance debt. You have to pay down what you don't know. And then slowly you grow through that and you become great and you become the people that you want to become through that consistency and repetition. So to reiterate, you all have some homework to do after this. First thing is, yeah, learn the tech jargon. Second thing, yeah, build meaningful, impactful projects. Third thing, be loud. Thank you all for having me, and I hope that you guys got some value out of this. Thank you.